And I had to give a speech uh, in Washington, D.C. That, that evening. And I want to repeat to you what I said that evening. I said, um, I said, I will now say something which I'm sure no American would ever think of saying. I said, when I think of these seven soldiers, I think of them as the first German soldiers in the entire 20th century uh, and beyond of whom I know for sure that they died fighting on the right side of the war. That is what I mean by the tremendous effect that 9-11 had on Germany. When we sent our troops to Afghanistan, it was a military activity for the first time outside of Europe where we know that it's right for us to do that, that we're part of the West, and that these soldiers are dying for, um, for a good an internationally accepted cause. So in a way, 9-11 has not only dramatically changed your country, it has accelerated German history. Think about it. I should, if I wanted to be, if I wanted to be comprehensive, uh, add a chapter here, but I'll leave that out so that we have a little more time for discussion about all the reasons why our two countries and why the two sides of the Atlantic are bound together not only by, by uh, common security concerns, but also by enormously important investment and trade interests. It's very interesting that uh, most people have no idea that your investment in Germany or in the European Union is vastly more important than all of America's investment in the entire East Asian area or in all of Latin America. Uh, you have created, American companies have created almost a million jobs in Germany. And if you add up the jobs that have been created by Siemens, Daimler Chrysler, BMW, and so many other companies in your country, uh, we've created even more jobs on American soil uh, through subsidiaries of German companies. In other words, we are in each other's country a creator not only of wealth, but also of employment. Uh, there is enormous portfolio and direct investment in both directions. And as the German ambassador let me tell you that I looked very carefully during the crisis days of 2002, 2003, whether the uh, willingness of Americans to buy German stock would decline because of the political difficulty and vice versa. And you know what happened? The business communities both here in New York and in Frankfurt didn't didn't care much about the political uh, problem. They simply kept investing. Investments went right up, 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 and up throughout this period. There was no, not in any category, a slump, which means that this business and investment and trade relationship is a very, very solid backbone of the transatlantic relationship that has helped us and would, will continue to help us overcome any instabilities that might arise in the security area or in other areas. Uh, I'm not going to go into that in any greater detail, but if there are any questions, I would be happy uh, to do that. Let me try to come to an end. Uh, How can we move forward from here? And what needs to be done? You will be voting uh, 
uh, in just a few days and there will be uh, a new administration or a re-elected administration uh, and we're all very interested in seeing how that's, what this will produce. I believe strongly that regardless of who will be elected in your country as the next president, there will be a greater willingness based on the experience of the last couple of years uh, to work with allies, to think about international institutions and their the usefulness, uh, and to uh, try to strengthen international uh, institutions and rules. In other words, I am relatively optimistic. Uh, I am relatively optimistic. What I said about the United States is, can also be said about, uh, about us in Europe. Uh, we do recognize that it is not true that whatever problems arose in the last two or three years, it, it's, it was only America's fault. I think that would be a terrible oversimplification. Uh, I think Europeans and Germans in particular are willing to see that we need to do a number of things also. And uh, I, want, I want to conclude by proposing to you just a couple of points. I think I have five points. Uh, that I believe will help us move into a new period where Europe and America, where Germany and the United States uh, should and I hope will work together in a, in, in greater, with greater harmony uh, than in the recent past. The first one, the first point is the one I just mentioned, namely that we need to get together and think about how we can jointly uh, sustain and strengthen the system which we created together after World War II. Remember one thing, the United Nations was not invented by Russia, not, nor by Germany, nor by Japan, or anybody else. It was invented as an idea and pushed through by the United States of America. It's your baby. Actually, it was a great idea. And I find it very interesting that polling data suggests that most Americans agree with that. More Americans, according to the polls that I've seen, believe that it's good and important for America to be associated with a strong and effective system of international institutions, including in particular, of course, the United Nations. In other words, I don't think there are, there are great big differences between us on that. And I would include, of course, not only the UN, but also NATO and the European Union. The, my second point, uh, regards strategy. Uh, I can give you an abstract formulation which will not be very meaningful to many of you. I can say to you we need to develop a uh, joint strategy on important issues of international crisis management. What does that mean? Let me explain it with one example. Iran. Why are we concerned about Iran? We're concerned about Iran because we believe that Iran might be on the verge of developing a military nuclear capacity. That is a concern, a proper concern to the United States, but it is an equal concern to the countries of Europe. It is a deep concern to a country like my own, which doesn't have any nuclear weapons of its own. Germany is one of the